Coming at you from on location in Denver, Colorado, but we're still going to talk about Massachusetts real estate because who would have thought the condo market would be this strong? Plus, we are almost at an inflection point for inventory levels in that single family market. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update and then just kind of connect some dots or some things that are happening in our economy because, well, there's some cautionary points out there. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand homes. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help. I'm working with some sellers at a higher price point at this point. There haven't been any recent sales in their price range, which means that we haven't lost any buyers to our competition. Rather than a price reduction, the sellers and I decided to offer another type of buyer incentive. We did what is called a 2-1 buy down. And it was so stunning to see how many agents called and asked, Hey, can I get an explanation of what that is? It's just crazy. It's, it's great that they called, don't get me wrong, but it was just absolutely amazing realization as to how many inexperienced agents are out there. And make sure you interview your agent to that point. It's the difference between getting a, a good value on a house or, well, overpaying. But so you know, well, are in the know, there are many folks who are utilizing 2-1 buy-downs or 3-2-1 buy-downs in order to get a lower rate for the time period that is thought that, well, we'd have higher rates in. Their thought is that they would then refinance after that two or three year period. So let's say today's rate is 8%. A 2-1 buy-down means that in year one, the interest rate would be 6% and year two would be 7% and then year three through 30, it's going to be 8%. A 3-2-1 buy-down rate is very similar, except the term is for three years and not two. So with this same example of an 8% rate today, then that means in year one, the rate would be 5%. In year two, it's going to be 6%. In year three, it's going to be 7%. And then year four through 30, it's going to be that 8%. It's a great product. It could make more sense to have a seller provide a buy-down credit than actually reduce the price of the house. But let's get into all this and jump into the single family market. Another weekly high set for inventory this week. There are currently 4,588 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is a 117 unit jump in available single family homes from last week with our inventory levels being 7.5% higher than they were just 28 days ago. Last week, we talked about the fall inventory uh, pullback. And when it was just going to start, my belief was that we were going to run until the end of October, until we started to see a drawdown in our inventory levels and another week of data in the books. And that likelihood is beginning to look more realistic. This excess inventory is some great news for buyers. I know interest rates are up, but a buyer today is able to find some good value in the marketplace. Not everywhere on every property, but there are definitely some good values out there to be had. The inventory gap tightened again this week. We now have 847 fewer houses on the market than this time last year. But look how close our inventory levels are to 2021. There's a very good chance that we could actually see inventory levels cross the levels of 2021 next week. There are only 122 fewer houses on the market today than at the same time in 2021. There's little doubt that our inventory levels are catching up to the levels of last year. And the next two graphs visibly help demonstrate why and how there were 925 single family homes that came on the market this week yes this was a pullback from the 983 houses that we saw come on the market last week but new listing activity was only off by 3.7 percent compared to the same time last year when 960 single family homes came on the market the four week rolling average is 1070 units we are well below that average but it's because the amount of new listings each week will start to pull back as we begin to close out 2023. We had 828 homes go under agreement, which was 11% less than the same week last year when 930 single family houses went under agreement. As I said earlier, you can really visually see why inventory growth is happening. It all makes sense when you see the graphs for the new listings that is pretty much in line with 2022. And then you look at the under agreements that have a sizable delta between the two years. This 11% is an improvement from last couple weeks, as we've seen a 16%, 17%, and then a 15% decrease in the amount of homes that went under agreement. I guess that is the well, silver lining that you can really point to at this point. The four-week rolling average is 873 units, so we were well below those levels. But just like new listings, we will see the pending numbers steadily decrease as we close out the year. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were off by 3.5%, while under agreements were off by 11%. That 8.5% difference is why we are seeing inventory growth year over year. 
Now, there were 470 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $852,000 and a median sales price of $636,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 13.9% as there were 546 single-family homes that sold. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you can get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory stayed steady at 1.48 months. Now, the 1.48 months this week is compared to the 1.38 months that we saw this week last year. It's still a great market for a seller, but the market, it's finicky. Some houses are selling quickly while others, well, they're just sitting. Real quick. Here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, that would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to the very hot condo market. We have 2,526 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory is up by a whole 32 units this week. While it's a small increment this week, it makes inventory up 8% in the last 28 days. The inventory gap tightened again this week after an unexpected 10 unit increase last week. So we currently have 263 fewer condos on the market than we did the same time last year, and 431 fewer units than the same time in 2021. If you haven't already, you should check out my monthly market report that I published last week because the condo market is strong right now. It's unbelievable. There are 408 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 547 units. Look at that chart. We have pretty much been toe-to-toe -to -toe with the amount of new listings since the middle of August, really. We actually listed more condos this week than we did the same week last year. The 408 condos this week is compared to the 386 last year, or 5.7% more. Last couple of weeks, we've been 0.8% and 2.2% short of the year prior levels, and now 5.7% more condos. Not to be outdone by new listings, we actually put an additional four units under agreement than we did the same time last year year as there were 374 condos that went pending this week compared to 370 this week last year and the four-week rolling average is 381 units so we're pretty much right on point there so 5.7 percent more listings coming on the market when compared to this week last year while 1.1 percent more condos selling as well a couple weeks ago i mentioned how i felt our condo market conditions were on par with the conditions that we saw last year here's a little bit more proof to that narrative there were 177 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $571,000 and a median sales price of $460,000. This same week last year, there were 176 condos that sold, so sales levels were off by 0.6%. Months of inventory ticked down slightly to 1.97 months from last week's 1.98 months. Any chance you could just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channel as it just plays with the YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So please subscribe. Time to talk about interest rates. Another rough week for interest rates. We aren't playing with 8% anymore. Most loans originated today are over 8%. If you're a prime buyer, then you might be below that threshold. But think again, if you're a prime buyer and looking at jumbo loans, they're expensive. Not for nothing, but we have been talking about how interest rates were going to be in the 8% range this fall, well, since July of this year. I had someone comment the other day that interest rates can't go up anymore because it's mathematically impossible. If that's your belief, then you really need to look at how interest rates are interpreted. Mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year treasury note. The 10-year treasury note and its yield is tied to market situations, specifically inflationary pressures. It has nothing to do with mathematics and the higher interest rates making houses unaffordable. Okay, we're going to fly through a bunch of articles here because they all are connected. Think of it as one plus one plus one equals three type scenario. You need to see the entire field to be able to figure out what's going on next. Check this out. 84% of CEOs expect a recession in 2024. 0% of Fed staff feel that we're going to go into a recession. Keep in mind, this was the Fed geniuses that put us into this mess as they told the world and acted out the fairy tale that inflation was all transitory. And how about this one? Chapter 11 filings by businesses soared 61% so far this year. The year isn't over. Bankruptcies generally are not a good thing for employment. I'm going to point out that a large amount of bankruptcies tend to be centered around retail. Oh, speaking of retail, how about this one? The consumer just crashed. Credit card spending unexpectedly craters in September. This happened in September. Why? Was it that consumers getting ready to make student loan payments? They just pulled back on their spending? Or was it something else? Like consumers have already maxed out their credit cards and just have no more room to maneuver. And one more. 
I have seen some championing the job report is some amazing numbers. Read into the data and you will see that 885,000 full-time jobs were lost while 1.127 million part-time jobs were created. I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm pretty sure that full-time jobs are better than part-time jobs. And stats like that do not show a strong and robust economy. Oh, and here's a bonus for you. No more rate hikes this year by the Fed because the private market is already doing the work for them. Have you seen Treasury yields lately? Plus, Fannie Mae's chief economist saying that his base scenario is the Fed starts reducing rates at the end of 2024. Want to talk about your own personal real estate goals? Whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. Any questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next week.